Okay, what's going on with the TC? It's a very beautiful uh, card deck. And then this came. Can you see it? Oh. It's the hatch. Did yeah. you make those, Lipia? No, I didn't. Oh. <laughs> no, they're called the Mother Peace Tarot. It's a very beautiful mm -hmm. deck. But then after the hatch. Was, uh, was that the Ace of Wands? Is that what that is? Yeah, Ace of Wands. And, and then it was like, okay, we're hatching. So what is the energy we need to like have for the hatch? And then this one came. It's called Daughter of Discs. And, and it talks about like a, um, it's like a, a, an anchoring energy, like calling a name. It's like giving yourself another name type of thing. So it's like the TEC is becoming itself, becoming something, it's like there's something grounding it. And then, and then I ask what could go wrong. <laughs> I already showed it to Tim. And then I asked what could go wrong. And then, and then this one came up, it's the devil, but in this um, deck, it has like a very like power structure type of thing. So I think it's a nice reflection for us all. Like, how do we deal with power? How can we like constantly think about hierarchies and about like, what is the place that we're taking in this, in this in the systems we're a part of? And then, and then the last one was, okay, so how, how do we deal with this, with this like tendency that we have as humans now, just by being brought up in the society to have like very um, big power dynamics. And then it came this one um, that talks about like finding your own center and your own power. So I think it's also interesting to like, for us to think of our own agency and, and how yeah. like the more we find our own self and anchor like in the decisions we can take and in the agency that we have, uh, it's less likely that we'll get into like fights for power or get into like ego trips and stuff. And which one was that? The so, what of one? It's called Shaman of Wands. It's a little bit different than the traditional card deck, but um yeah okay so i don't know if uh any of you has something uh question that you want to start the call with if you don't um uh, if you don't i'll propose like a three minute body exercise. So you better say it quick. <laughs> I like the body exercise. I feel I need it. <laughs> so. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I imagine that everybody's seating for a long time, especially in Europe, it's already like towards the end of the day. So, uh, um, yeah, you can, you can close your camera, Griff, if you want, or if you don't want, you can stay there. Or everybody can open their cameras. That's even better. Uh, so just stand up if you can in the place where you're at and feel your, your feet like in the floor. Feel how, how weird it is that the whole body can stand on just like two very small surfaces and how much balance you have in your body already for just being able to stand up. So just take a breath here, feeling the, the ground. And imagine your breath is going all the way down your spine until your perineum, so until like the, the, the base of your spine. 
And then exhale. And then just open a little bit, like as if you were waking up, but you're standing up. Feel what is that your body needs to awake <laughs> and just stretch it. Don't forget to breathe and think about your spine. So just move your spine up and down. Feel what are all of the movements you can make with your spine. You can go in your belly, you can go to the side. You can feel it moving your, your head and how your spine supports your head that is heavy and stands on the whole day. Just find a flow for a minute. See what else needs to move. Like let the body speak with you. And then slowly come back. At your own time. And now you're back in the sole of your feet, feeling the ground. Shake it a little bit. And let's take one big breath uh, together. So one, two, three, and we inhale. Exhale. Okay. We can start. Thanks, Livy. <laughs> Thank you guys for getting in with me. Um, okay, so let me post the agenda. And so I've got... I think there's um, there's a lot we'll talk about like policies and the agreements that we have in the in the next month post the hatch. But we started to talk about this last week, and um, and then Zeptimus and I were talking about his proposal, and we thought this is a good kind of a case study for us to look at together and see what is working for our decisions and what is not. So, and I was just looking at snapshot and for some reason I could not find what is our, uh, what is our website? Does anybody know on the top of their head? I thought it was T. T comes. Yeah, Katie? Dot org, right? ECCommons.org. Oh, dot org. I thought it was dot io. So T Commons dot org. Oh, there you go. Okay, cool. So I'll try to open a snapshot page for us. Is anybody opposed mm -hmm. to that? Cool. And I'll see if it works for for how we are using the the forum now because I think I have a feeling that the forum is not working so well. But let's let's talk about it. So so Zeptimus proposed um, using Dashlane as a TEC credentials manager, and he also submitted earlier to advice process. So we kind of followed like all of the steps that we would like to have it followed. And, and there was a good uh, incorporating the feedbacks that he received 
And Zap, I don't know if you want to talk uh, a little bit about it. Like, what was the process for you? Yeah, initially, like my my idea, honestly, was to get more engagement, especially like from, you know. I, I mean, I don't want to say names, but uh, yeah, just more engagement and how to deal with this. And yeah, I don't know. I, I just prefer like you you keep talking. Like. I don't know, like, honestly, like, the idea is, like, the community engagement and, you know, like, make decisions around, like, the, the beginning, like, the idea I had is, like, okay, the community will have, the, because I, I was engaging individually with a lot of people and a lot of people have different opinions and what I have on my mind, like, okay, I create this advice process and all the people will give their opinions and then I will create a forum vote with all the opinions and then the community will decide, but there was not that much opinion at the end on the advice process like i feel lack of engagement yeah so i think the advice process had quite like there was three people that answered to it kind of with ideas i think this is not that bad of of an engagement, but maybe what was missing more was the actual voting. And maybe this brings the, it brings us to think, okay, what should be the process of when there, oops, uh, here, wrong thread. What should be the process of yeah, but, when but, there is a voting? But, but the thing is on, mm -hmm. the, on the engagement we had, like for instance, we were going to use jam and the only feedback we had on on this for advice process was hey folks don't use jam it's not a secure program it's for users not for uh, i don't want to say business but I, for lack of a better word and then uh, we follow that feedback and instead of using jam we go for dashlane but that's the only feedback i had like no one asked like how who like honestly like, it was a very philosophical um, question and you know who should have the credentials for TC who should act in name of it like should it be centralized should it not be uh, and I felt like it was a lack of engagement in that point like for the yeah for the tools yeah uh, actually it was Turkadas uh, he posted that but uh, yeah he what what Turkadas was suggesting we I, I'll I adapt the, his feedback on the only one proposal we had. Um, so you so you felt like there was the you didn't fulfill the need of having a more yeah a more philosophical discussion about like how how would people step up into this role of like holding credentials? What is something that allow people to have credentials and and so on, some type yeah. of process like that? Exactly, yeah, the idea was people engage with processes and not as much as tools. Uh, but then at the end, like YGG uh, was saying like, this should be like, and then that's why I just created the proposal, just have something uh, for now. And yeah, as YGG was saying, maybe we like the TC could even found uh, some research on that matter, and maybe someone wants to pick that. Yeah, for sure. I think it's a big topic of of discussion, like ownership in DAOs when you have a decentralized community and you still don't have tools that allow you to be like completely decentralized. What is the like how to manage this type of ownership. But what I wanted to bring up using this proposal as an example is that, so there was the advice process in the forum and maybe when there is a lack of engagement, like do we want to go talk to the people that we want feedback from individually? Um, do we want to post this proposal somewhere to have some type of like awareness that they're happening? And then whenever a voting happens, like for example, this vote had six people. 
Um, I didn't want to vote for it because I wanted to suggest having like one more person at it. And then this made me think, okay, maybe this process, like how do we go about the process when there are things to change in a proposal, even after advice process, or like what is the minimum quorum we need? Is six people okay to pass this type of vote or, or not? Um, so I just wanted to open a little bit for thoughts anyone might have. And maybe you let me frame a few questions here. So what is the minimum? Or mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if it's a question, but I'll just say what I'm thinking. Um, so using the forum for proposals like that, I can't say that I was even aware of this. So I wonder if it might not be a good idea to have a universal process. Maybe there, maybe there already is, and I just don't know it. But a universal process for um, creating proposals so that they circulate as much as as much as possible, or that they receive as many eyes on them as possible. Yeah, I, I resonate with with Katie. I understand that there is some some times that we need to vote with tools like Lock and Lock, which we've used for PARMs and for Impact Towers. And then there is other times when we just need to figure out the opinion of the community and we use the forum. But having different methods, it just everything spreads spreads out and it makes you even harder to figure out where do I have to go even if I want to vote or even knowing that I that there's a vote going on. And unless those promoting the vote do the effort of approaching every single one of us or at least some of us, you don't even realize. I remember last time Zepti approached me because of, of the vote he was posting on, on the forum. Yeah, I agree that we need to find solutions for for both of them. So we do have a, a channel here that it's voting on Discord, TC voting. Um, and then it seems like people like look at it. We could start using that for all the votings that we have and maybe have some type of communication like in those weekly letters that are going, like we include a section for proposals. And even when there's no proposals, at least we say like there are no proposals this week, just so people get used to having that information there and knowing what is the place to look at. Um, and then another question is, uh, what is the minimum quorum needed for forum voting? So how many people have to vote for us to think like, okay, this is valid? I'm just wondering as well, further to the question of the minimum quorum needed, um, whether like certain votes kind of don't need to be made by everyone. Not that there'd be a lack of transparency, but it's I guess the question is, do we always want everyone to be voting on something? So if it's if it's a, like that one you were just sharing, which seems very specific, that you would have to have a certain amount of knowledge of the different options available. Um, whether, you know, it might make more sense to have certain votes within the working group spaces. Um, not to shut people off in, at all, but just, and, and then you could be looking at the minimum quora dependent on we need this many in this working group. I, yeah, I generally think these votes, these sorts of votes should fail open, as in like, we should have a priority of continuing work and not being like, I didn't get enough votes. Like, I, some things can stay in a working group and if, if something didn't get enough votes it, you know i feel like the vote was more just like getting people's 
awareness or trying to get people's awareness. And I, I don't know. I feel like it's there in, in that, you know, everyone kind of trusts you up to do the, make the best decision. Uh, and you follow the device process really well. And if there's only four votes, that seems like enough to me, uh, as long as it's unanimous. And if there's seven votes and one block, that would still pass as well, I think, right? Or is it eight votes and one block would still pass? You know, I, I don't really see a, a minimum quorum even needed. Like, as long as, as long as, I think the more social objective, like, objection would be like, whoa, 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 no one told about this. Like, pretty sure you announced it during the call. Pretty sure that, like, people knew it was happening, uh, or enough people knew that it was happening, that, like, and you were talking about it for weeks in the call about how you were looking into this and if anyone had any interest. And we just have to be like, okay, no one, even though it affects everyone, how we manage our digital security, most people just feel like it's too niche of an issue to, like, have an opinion on. That's okay. I, I agree in this case because Zeb was already, you know, announcing it. We were all, you know, most of us were aware of, that, of it. And I guess that voting was more to see if anyone was opposing the direction that we were taking than, than really, you know, pushing forward for it. And, and for those kind of votes, I don't even think we need a quorum. It, it's more, you know, an acknowledgement of the community and, and you know, confirming that you know, what a specific group was saying that he would be leading towards is being done. But some of the votes, like the impact towers or like the proposals, when we start, you know, voting for proposals and stuff like that, I think we should try to keep them in one in one place or through one same process. And as, as, as uh, Louis said, I think it's important if there is nothing to vote, we just go there and we see you know, there is nothing to vote this week. Just don't worry about it. But you go there to check every single week because that's the place you gotta go to to make sure you don't miss any voting. I agree with that. Yeah, that sounds great. That's that's what I would agree with too. And now that after Griff you spoke, it made me realize. Oh, of course I knew Zepti was talking about that uh, in June, but I didn't. I guess I didn't realize it was a vote. <laughs> <laughs> or that it needed my vote. So I get it. That, that sounds good. So maybe to what Griff said, having a list of steps to follow for a decision to be made in the forum might be a good idea to like, um, because how could we prevent someone of just posting a proposal straight into the forum and then never talk to nobody before about it? but the proposal is there and he got four votes and then this person feels like I can see that fight happening, for example, you know, like, oh, let me grab my friends to vote into this here and, and I'll have a justification to why this proposal is legitimate because look at this other vote that only had six people and it was considered, so my, why mine was it, wouldn't be considered? I, I think it would be through advice process, and if someone could object and be like, I don't believe advice process was followed, then like, like why wasn't I, why didn't anyone tell me about this? That's not following the advice process, right? So you would just say, well, you're violating the advice process. You should have talked to this person before you made the decision. And we also have Celeste for those cases. I mean, Celeste would, would grab just the on-chain stuff, right? Yeah, but that's a but good I, point. But, but, but mm -hmm. I, I, sorry, Lee, I agree. We, maybe it'd be, it would be a good idea to define a procedure. And so, for, for maybe for voting and for, for a specific voting like proposals and have, you know, someone that can be, can be changing every once in a while. It doesn't have to be always the same people or the same group 
just making sure that all the processes is, is gone through. Okay, and and I, 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 it's like we've always said that before posting on the forum, you have to start, you know, checking the community if your proposal might be interesting or not. After that, you have to post on the forum. Then, then we have to go through voting, and at least someone should check that that's that's being done. All right, and then if one proposal gets three votes and another one gets ten votes, you know, this is the way it is. <laughs> If you get enough voting to, you know, have your proposal passed, that's the way we work. That's that's how we define our, our you know, our DAO. But uh, but at least we make sure that, you know, the whole process was was uh, taking into account. It, it went through all all the steps that we require those proposals, if they are proposals or those votes, if if it's someone internally that's posting a voting. Yeah, I agree. I think that makes immense sense to have like an agreed, easily available step by step guide of, of how voting is expected to happen or proposal making. I was just having a look in the voting channel. There's no like pinned message there. So that would, you know, like be a really simple place to have um, expectations shared. How is Leticia? Is there someone not in the call that is in the document too? Or is someone logged as Leticia? <laughs> yeah, no idea. That's pretty cool. Okay, someone collaborating async. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, so so maybe we look into this. There is this agreements. We need to work on them again to look at all of them. But for the forum voting, there is like the dates and how they were set, like what is the cycle for submitting and voting into proposals. But we don't talk nothing about advice process here. So that is a good place to start to put uh, the farm voting with. Uh, yeah, I guess it's a bit separated. So we could include advice process as like, um, required process for submitting a proposal. Wouldn't that be too much in the case? I mean, imagine uh, we can talk about this like before, people should uh, go through advice process, then voting, then ask for funds on conviction voting. Wouldn't that be too much? No, conviction voting would be something separate. Okay. We're talking about things that would not go through convic to conviction voting. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And then another thing to decide is, is does this make sense to submit a proposal until Friday and then close the voting on Monday? It could be that Proposals are there for a week in advice process, and then they have the weekend for voting and a decision to be made, or is that too short of time? I, I, I honestly was feeling like just a, a week, uh, a weekend. I mean, it, it also depends on when you post, but I would suggest like half at least, you know, a full week before closing a forum vote. I don't know. I agree. I think the, the, the weekend. Weekend days, some people, you know, they like to disconnect. So having boats just on weekends, I don't think it's a good idea. At least we should have a few more days, you know, maybe the midweek until the weekend or starting on Friday until mid of next week or something like that. So if you go out for a weekend and you want to disconnect, I don't think it's, you know, it's a good idea to just have the weekend to be able to vote. I know it's just a vote, 
but sometimes you you may need to and go over the whatever it's needed to vote. You just cannot go and say yes, no, or whatever the voting is asking for. So what about until Tuesday? Yeah, as long as we have one or two days during the week, I think it's fine. I just want to second that I agree that the weekend, making the weekend the point for very important procedures is really, um, well, for me, it's like literally impossible. So that's always a bummer when things are happening on the weekend. It's extremely, extremely difficult as a parent to be able to commit serious time to, to issues for voting. Does anybody has more comments about this forum process or the voting processes in general that we're having? Yeah, I, I, I resonate with what you were saying at the beginning. Maybe we should have m more defined, like, like, uh, like I don't remember if what's your sister or Letty, but we were lacking. They they were asking like we were lacking transparency on our processes, and I feel it's true. Like it's like we were discussing now. Four votes are enough. I mean, I don't know. Maybe maybe it is, and maybe but if it is, we should put it somewhere. Like. Be transparent on, the, on those things. Um, I just think that transparency is not about the amount of votes. I think transparency comes uh, comes in the in how the process has been translated and communicated also. And for me, these kind of processes, um, the the working groups. I don't know how it works uh, necessarily here, but the working groups should have certain independency on what kind of processes they can sort of push through. And, and then um, in the proposal, it should be stated how much quorum, if needed, it is necessary um, or not. So I think it's, it's a matter of understanding the working group sort of boundaries and also kind of um, if you don't have quorum, or you think you, you need quorum and it can be escalated to the stewards call, for example, and then bring brought to the stewards and then you will you need to have a stewards vote. But I think this is a matter of understanding the boundaries rather than understanding how many votes do we need. So my two cents on that on this topic. That's an interesting point to that each proposal should suggest its own quorum. But that can be like very gamed very easily. Yeah, it, it's referring to these boundaries. Like if a if a proposal is for a working group and that proposal is within the scope of the working group activities and it doesn't affect necessarily uh, something that affects it will affect the rest of the community, but it doesn't necessarily it's within the scope of the working group basically. Then the working group can suggest a quorum. And then if it needs to be escalated, then it's escalated to the community and the vote is open to the community. It will always be open to the community, but it's just to understand like um, this process of, of not necessarily focusing on the amount of votes, but just what is the purpose of, um, of the proposal, who it affects, and then who can take the decision to push it through. If, it, if it's a matter for the community, it's a matter that can be decided by the working group. I think this, this clarification needs to be stated on the proposal. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I feel a little bit afraid of like tying decision making too much to working groups because what is it going to be the evolution of our 
of our configuration. Are we still gonna have many working groups being the base of all the work? Or are they gonna be like divided somehow in, in other processes or um but it's interesting maybe having a group that is involved in that proposal having to agree with it having to vote for it i just think forum votes are going to be too varied to have such a strict process or like seems like they should have a more like default pass kind of a solution because like in the end work needs to go like DAO bureaucracy can get out of hand and like all of the Moloch DAOs have no quorum at all no quorum one vote passes it one person with one share can pass to spend all the money out of the DAO you know and hasn't caused any issues yet uh, in general in general defaulting towards like yes a default yes is uh should be treasured because if someone wants to do something they should just have they should get permission to do it when it's you know if it's spending money you know like in the end uh it's very i, I think we're going to have a lot of working groups we're going to have a lot of independent groups trying to coordinate and if we put too much friction then it's it's going to be a challenge to work with so making sure that it's as frictionless as possible but, but with like open standards and telling people be considerate you know like you know uh and if you're not being considerate if you're not using advice process then like people will call you out and it probably will make it harder to get future funding from the dow you know through conviction voting and these sorts of things so yeah and i would like to add that even if default if we have a, the, a just for default, then um, within the structure or within the boundaries or within whatever, there should be this statement that if you've got a default yes, then you should, by transparency, communicate it and explain it to the community. Like that should be, at least for my opinion, a must. Like if you pass a default yes, then you have to come forward and explain and sort of, you know, uh, make your case if you want to. Um, Yeah, that would be the advice process, pretty much. Yeah, it's a good it's a good way of thinking of just like making it the more open possible, but in a way that people feel like good by sharing information and wanting to communicate. And I think also once in a while, it's good to have a check of what are the um, how do you call it? The status quo rules that emerged because you have the things that are required and the things that are forbidden. And then everything that is in between is permitted. And the permitted can start creating status quo rules that are very like um, intrinsic to the, the behavior of everyone and to the way the community operates. So. So maybe we can have this process happening like very free and then maybe every two months or something like that, have a, like a, a status quo rule check, like see what has emerged naturally. What are the directions people are taking for things that are simply permitted? There, uh, I think there was a lot of input in this topic and maybe we can start working with, with this. So just a recap, there's not much that needs to change, but mostly the communication. So having more clear channels for when a voting is happening and then extending this cultural idea that votes end on, on Tuesday and that we don't need a quorum, but that we need like 
uh, advice process and some type of open dialogue about what is trying to be done. Um, and then add a proposal section to the weekly updates and always use the voting chat on Discord to check on stuff. And then have some type of like periodic checks about like to understand what is culturally emerging. Does anybody wants to add something or opposes something that was that was said that we can kind of follow with this? Um, I just want to say that for me, this is like hugely relevant in the sense of understanding these processes in order to escalate it to uh, whatever going to happen after the Hajj. And I think we should not underestimate it, these mechanisms and the lack of engagement even that Septi mentioned. And um, at some point, we should have this conversation of sort of understanding these dynamics. Could be working groups, could be working groups, could be proposals, whatever, and sort of bring it to, uh, to the paper so we can sort of all have the same um, agreement or consensus on what will be the ideal transparency practices that we will be deploying. So what exactly you're proposing? To sort of um, find a consensus on this kind of uh, conversation that we were just having, a consensus that can, can be outlined, outlined to the rest of the community. Oh, you mean to have a vote about this to move forward? Yeah, no, no. I mean, I, I don't know if there is a need for a vote now, but to develop these ideas in a more cohesive way so we can sort of, um, yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> I think so. I think I think it's like the way it's moving, right? Like anything you would like to add apart to this point that that I just mentioned? Eduardo, you're muted. Oh yeah, sorry. No, uh, for me it's fine so far. Okay, cool. Um, and then Katie, we could coordinate together to to look into this, to adding to the weekly updates and and. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. I just said, sounds good. Okay. Okay. Do. Cool. <laughs> and Mateo, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I, I have a question regarding the point that says working groups should have some independence. Uh, maybe I missed that part, but I don't quite get it. So if you could explain it easily, what does that mean? I was just taking notes. I think Zeptimus or Griff mentioned this. But but from my understanding was just the idea that or or maybe Anne Marie actually that uh, working groups should have some type of independence on making decisions and what types of decisions even need to be voted on. Okay. Yeah, it was it was more really that um, I guess the way that I equate decentralization, it doesn't mean that it doesn't necessarily mean that. Um, everything has to be open to everyone um, in the sense that like I find it incredibly useful to have an immense amount of trust so um, like I'll trust that certain people have better skills at making decisions on things than I do like I might just not have the knowledge or the experience and it just feels to me like it makes things flow a lot easier if there is a, a level of trust given to like people um, that working on a certain thing and have if it's a fair you know if it's a very specific thing it, it's great to have that open but from my perspective it would to me it would make more sense to kind of have the trust that um 
people that have the specific knowledge are possibly the ones to make the right decision. And I guess that kind of, I, I guess what I find finding really interesting about um, the DAO space and the kind of having open votes is that like anyone could vote on anything. I could, I could just vote on things. It doesn't mean I could just be sitting, looking out the window, pressing a button. I'm not saying that's necessarily what people are doing, but um, whereas I guess, yeah, just um, it, it, to me, it makes sense of like making things move very easily if small groups are making decisions and moving things forward. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. And, and I was asking because I had in mind that it's very likely that the proposals, when they pass, either they become part of a working group or they become a working group but for their own. So that sense of independence and what, what Anne-Marie was saying uh, makes more sense in that aspect. So yeah, I agree. <clears throat> Yeah, we talked about this uh, some time ago, I remember, with Nate, who I guess he's not here, but um, I think that we agreed that that's, that's a good way to function. Cool. So that was all I had for today. Does anybody has another topic you want to bring up it, we have 10 minutes. If no one has anything else, uh, there's uh, an impact hour. If anyone wants to join the, the final math work that YGG and Jeff and I, and I think Livia will be there too tonight. We're doing a big um, finalizing the impact hour list. There's nothing anyone can really help with. It's really like YGG playing Python and Jeff and I finalizing, finalizing like uh, the ideas on it. But Livia was talking about writing a forum post to explain how the impact hours uh, are going to be shifted uh, or like what the results of the compromise ended up being. And then also, I think it's just worth kind of a, a note that we discovered that the in in testing and discussing uh, the the to keep the simple supply constant, we actually had to we have to like reduce the number of impact hours that everyone is getting. So uh, for for the builders, like the twenty five percent, twenty percent, ten percent, we it's not like a lot. I think it's like a, what will that be like a five percent reduction in hours, and then so instead like we're kind of just doing percentages so like yeah anyway it's a it's some complicated stuff uh and the impact hours got way out of control uh so like uh yeah it's kind of it honestly it's kind of a mess but it will be clear at how they were created eventually so i i guess i would love some advice process if um we should like stopped the launch and not launch before pay I, I really hope that well I, I i just like should we make that process abundantly clear so that everyone can follow and document it like really well and that would block the hatch uh from launching tomorrow until that's documented really well or is it okay to document it really well and have that not block the hatch uh, I, I don't know if anyone feels strongly one way or another. Mm, maybe I'll popcorn to Tam. Oh, exciting. <laughs> so, um, well, I have the advantage of having had some time to speak with you earlier and think about it a little bit, but um, I like the idea of having the finalist distribution with a summary of the, um, the, um, uh, com compromised collaboration that was made. And um, since that was what was voted in, and then having the more technical detailed version 
come very quickly after. I don't think that the technical detailed version should uh, prevent us from hatching. And I'll pass to um, Anne-Marie. Yeah, I'm not sure I have all the context needed, but my sense is um, if, if it's been voted in already and it's been agreed that that's how we're moving forward, then move forward with the hatch and yeah, that would be what I'd say. Um, Matteo. Yeah, uh, I don't have a strong opinion on that. I'll pass it to Santi. I have my own opinion. I think all this, <clears throat> all this impact hours uh, thing has gone away of our hands. And uh, I don't really like the idea of stopping the hatch. I hate that idea, but I think anyone should have a chance to take a look at the final result and, and give their opinion. That's something that uh, even though we voted, one thing is voting, another thing is seeing the result. And, you know, people may be surprised, happy or unhappy, uh, you know, and, but at the same time, I, I just don't want to stop the hatch at all. So I just don't know how to solve that issue. I don't know if we should give a few hours for, you know, for listening to anyone before the hatch starts tomorrow. And if you guys finish today, I just don't want to be involved. I know it's a lot of work and I appreciate all, all your involvement. But I think I'm one of the whales. I don't want to get involved. I don't really like the way this has been outcome. I, I'm not blaming anyone at all. But, uh, but I just don't think, I never thought that we should touch what had been, had been done before. So I just, I just feel better if I don't get involved. That's my, my own opinion. I can take it. Um... I think we should hatch. Um, I think we are doubting ourselves a little bit too much on, on certain circumstances. There was a vote um, and we, I, I see and I can tell that we have done the best of, to, uh, of what we can, of the things that we could do to achieve a horizontal process that could sort of um, compile the most of the opinions of everyone that voted. And I think we have fulfilled our role. And, and we, at some point, we should be able to also understand like, when to call it out and when to just stop questioning if it's a, if we need more time if we you know there's there's we should draw the line also understanding if you are the ones who have the information and you um, made the best that you could do I don't think that won't change within time and I think that delaying more time will just bring more confusion than anything else so yeah I will pass it on to Shula. Thank you Adol. yeah I totally agree with that. Um, and certainly, yeah, so many great points, um, Griff, Anna Marie, Tam, Santi, uh, you can have, we certainly can see all of the details later but and have opinions on it and discussions, but I don't think that itself needs to uh, inhibit the hatch at all, you know. Right, I'll leave it at that. I don't need to ramble on. Um, okay, I'll pass to Mount Manu. Thanks. Uh, I don't have anything else to say other than uh, I have an idea for a proposal. I just uh, can't do it by myself. It it uh, it involves micro franchising and creating some sort of like a, like an incubator for micro franchises so that uh, lifting people out of poverty becomes profitable. Uh, it, again, like aligning incentives, but it's it's complex and I can't do it by myself. I don't have enough. Uh, you know, uh, development economic experience. So if anyone is, else is interested, I know Matteo was a little bit interested when I mentioned it to, hi to him. Uh, I know Griff is gonna be definitely interested. Uh, actually, the placeholder name uh, is Lifteth, <laughs> in honor of Giveth. Uh, but uh, yeah, if anyone else interested in maybe discussing it or, or thinking about how we can do it, then just message me and uh, yeah, that's it. I'll back to you, Libby. Um, I don't think this should block the hatch because I think there was a, a process that 
I think it was the most beautiful outcome we could have had. I think it would be very harmful for us if we had continued on a polarized route. And I think that's a very common thing to happen. Like we are a large community of people from all over the world with all sorts of different uh, experiences and life and beliefs and everything. So um, I think we handled well, like we're in the best way possible this uh, polarization. And, and I feel like it deserves a good story and it deserves to be talked in, in its multiplicity, not only from the like impact our perspective, but also from the cultural perspective and from like, uh, what were the processes that happened with everyone? Because I think it's also what we're doing here, this research on the cultural build and uh, understanding and documenting these things that are not so easy to be visible from someone that is not from the community. So I think it will be good to have just a quick explanation of what happened, where we at, like closing this process in in that forum thread that has so many posts, and then having the hatch and having like a more detailed um, blog post like you suggested, Griff, after that. Um, and also just a point of, of like, if we could, um, if people should have space to voice their opinions about that, yeah. I think they should, but I don't know if this should, um, I don't think there's a decision that can come from the comments that people can make. So I don't think that should delay the hatch. Yeah, I mean, I, in the I, end, I, the, fi the final list will have to be posted. Uh, just, in fact, I would love to hear you respond to this, Santi. The final list has to be posted. It's just all, uh, make, making it digestible of all the details, that how it got there. In the end, that final list will be on GitHub, but it just won't be well documented. So it will be there, but like to make it digestible, is that takes time. And the final list will be out probably a good... 12 hours minimum before we hatch. I am not, uh, I trust completely the work of, of you guys. I think that mistakes can be done and all this process has been greatly transparent and absolutely transparent and it should be like that. Uh, it's, not, it's not having to go into the details, but if some is their amount and they don't understand why, they should get at least a response, uh, letting them know, okay, this is this, this, and this, and that's it. And if there's a mistake, correct it, because we are all humans and mistakes can happen. I think that's a really good point. Maybe we can make sure that we get someone besides YGG checking the final data that's like very Python oriented. I'm sure I could probably get Vitor and uh, a few other people uh, to, support in that effort and then just party in paris and everything gets uh we are we'll be all happy after that yeah we gotta be popping hopefully we're popping the cork tomorrow so cool. speaking of which yeah uh, yeah we're we're doing that call right now uh, i imagine in this room so yeah i i, I was dubbing if what's I mean I, I, I didn't have a strong opinion uh, but I think it's it's important to use the the time in Paris to build you know reveal trust or that stuff so I feel it helps like if we launch before Paris to you know maybe yeah I just I just feel it helps So should I bring yeah. that bottle again, Grieve, or what? Yeah, are you coming over tomorrow? <laughs> there's a party tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, if we're hatching tomorrow, man, you damn right there's going to be a party. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, all right. I'll bring the bottle, but you guys have to drink. I'm not going to drink it myself alone. <laughs> That's the spirit. All right, guys. I hope to see you tomorrow all in the hatch then. Um... I will leave you to work, and if anything is needed, let us know. Take care.